Okay guys, so I'm gonna start off this video by saying that I'm not an expert on carburetors. Uh, I know a little bit. I know enough to maybe help someone who doesn't, uh, who's just beginning in carburetors. So that's why I'm gonna make this video. Uh, uh, just take it, you know, take it for what it is and uh, you know, don't lean on every word I say. So that being said, uh, the first thing I wanna do is actually uh, before we get going is go on the computer and show you guys like a little calculator that you can use to kind of determine What size carburetor you need for your motor? So let's go do that really quickly and then we'll get back into like the actual way to start Okay, so this is Holly's website and they have this little section here where you can um, you know kind of basically put in your info and figure out kind of a starting point for what size carb you need so the cubic inches, uh, we're gonna go 306, uh, maximum RPM. I'm gonna say 6200 because that's roughly where our intake is rated for, it's between 6000 and 6200. So I don't see us going much over that. Um, it's mildly modified, just because I know that my cam has a lot of duration. So, well, I mean a decent amount of duration, I'm not gonna say a lot. We want four barrel, gasoline, not marine, it's automotive. Is it supercharged? Nope. Uh, we want mechanical secondaries and we want a manual choke. So, and let's see what it comes up with. Okay, so the first one comes up as a 600 double pumper. Second one, 600 double pumper, uh, 650 brawler carburetor. Uh, 650 double pumper, so 650, 600, 650. So the one I have, the one I chose is this one here. Okay, this is the exact carburetor I have. It's got four corner idle, uh, it's got dual inlets for the feed, um, what else, mechanical choke, just the basic stuff. So Okay guys, so I got the carb on the bench right now and I just kinda wanted to go through a few things before I show you on the car. Uh, so number one, what you wanna do is, I'm, if you watch any YouTube videos, you'll know that your, these are your four corner idles and you basically wanna adjust all of them uh, a turn and a half out, okay? So you just go in and come back out a turn and a half, okay? So that's number one. Uh, number two, okay, you wanna check your little transfer slots. Now, if you look closely uh, let's see if I can do this with one hand okay when I open the throttle you can see there's a slot right there and then there's a hole there and a hole there well that that slot is your transfer slot you want to adjust your curb you know the curb idle screw which is this large one here <clears throat> this large screw here you want to adjust that so that you just start to barely see that slot okay so that's the key uh, to getting it to start and idle with, you know, the mixture screws having an effect. Uh, if you go to, if you open that up too much to get it to idle, your mixture screws won't have any effect. Okay. Now, if you put it on there and you start the car and it just will not idle unless you back that, unless you open the throttle up, meaning that you, you know, screw your curb idle screw down and it, it just won't idle. Um, then what you wanna do is you wanna take it back off and you come over here to your secondary plate. Okay, this is your secondary. And there's a little set screw here that you can actually crack the secondaries, okay? Now you're not getting into any of the, <clears throat> um, you know, you're not getting into the transfer slot of the secondary, which is way down there. You're just cracking it enough to give you some more air, okay? To keep the engine idling, okay? Because if you, like I said, if you go too far with your uh, uh, curb idle, you're gonna get you're gonna get into this zone here. Like, I don't know if you can see that or not. Like, I can't see it because I'm like blind, but hopefully the camera's picking it up. But you can see if if it's if you're idling in this area here, you can see that slot. It, that's too much. You want to just be able to just see it. That way, you're not pulling um, fuel. From that uh, transfer slot while you're idling okay you want your fuel coming from 
your idle, your idle holes, which is this hole up here, 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 and here. Okay. Those are your idle holes. Those are the holes that are going to have the effect on your four corner idle screws. Okay. So if you have your throttle blade open too much, those screws aren't going to do anything. You're, it's, you're going to be turning them and it's not going to do a thing. Okay. So, and then, like I said, if you turn your curb idle down and it just won't idle, you got to crack the secondaries a little bit and then just keep cracking the secondaries until it's idling and your, your, uh, your primary is, is, like I said, just barely showing that transfer slot. That's the key. Uh, you know, it, it, usually when you buy brand new carburetors that's set up like that already, but most of the time people will get carburetors from people who've got the carburetor completely out of adjustment and they don't, they didn't know what they were doing and they sold it because they thought it was a bad carburetor or whatever. Uh, you know, go through that, make sure that you can just barely see the transfer slot on the primary. Okay. The secondaries, your transfer slots way down there. So you will never get into that. Okay. So I'm, I'm talking when you crack it, you're just cracking it. Okay. With this screw here, it's up underneath. So you got to kind of take the carburetor off in order to get to that. And I'm, I just go like a half a turn. And actually this carburetor required me to go a half a turn to crack that. I, to, to crack the secondaries in order to get my adjustment back on the, on the, uh, four corner idle. Okay. And also you want to make sure that if you're way far off on the four corner idle, meaning, uh, you back it out a, a turn and a half on the four corner idle and it's, it's totally off and you have to screw it way in to get it to make any adjustment. That's you're, you're not in the right range. Okay. Uh, and a, a turn and a half is really close where it should be. Um, you know, the, these are for kind of more for fine adjustment. So if, if you're not getting any adjustment, then you need to look elsewhere. Okay. So now that we've got that, uh, we're going to go ahead and put it on the car and I'll show you starting it up. Um, first we're going to set the fuel pressure and then uh, we'll get it warmed up, start it up, get it warmed up. And, um, then we'll go through the four corner idle and set the floats too. We set the floats first and then you can go over to the, the four corner idle. So let's do that. And then I'll come back once I get it warmed up and, and we can go and I'll show you a few things on that. Okay, so we're out at the car right now and we've got the carb installed. Uh, I'm not sure if I showed you guys this or not, but uh, I went ahead and got some new valve covers. I know I was making a joke in a couple of videos ago about those valve covers being cool, but you know, I wanted um, some valve covers that had some nice breathers in it. Because uh, I believe that I got a little leak in the back of my intake because of crankcase pressure. pressure. So uh, this should help out quite a bit. And plus they look really good. Um, these were from Summit for like 79 bucks um, for the pair. And then these were, I don't even know, 15, $20 a piece. So we're good there. Okay, so we got the carb installed and what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go ahead and set the fuel pressure. Uh, you can just run it, <clears throat> just run your fuel pump, um, start it up. I do have it already set, so should be good to go. Yeah, a little over five, five and a half. So five and a half and our fuel bowls are halfway, if you can see that, halfway there, halfway there. So our fuel bowls are good. I've already ad uh, adjusted that. I'm not going to show you how to do that. It's really simple. I'll turn this off. So the next thing to do, once you get that, uh, and we, you do the preliminary adjustments on the bench, like I showed you. Uh, and also make sure once you do that, check your accelerator. I mean, you don't have to at this point, but check your, you know, your accelerator pumps to make sure that the arm is, you know, there's no movement. You don't want any movement. You want it pretty much flush. Okay. So when this arm moves, you're instantly activating your, um, your secondary or your, your squirters. Okay. But to get it idling, you don't, that's not that important at the moment. So anyway. So I'll get the car started up, get it warmed up, and then I'll come back and then we'll go from there as far as starting the adjustments. Okay. 
Okay, so you can see it's jumping around between 12 and like 12.7, sometimes hitting 13. So I'm gonna turn the these, so I'm gonna turn these out and we'll see it richen up. the idle come down too. So now you can see it's consistently staying in the 11s. So you can see it's consistently staying at 11 and a half. So we just richened it up. Now let's put it back. Basically, it was a, about a half a turn. There it comes, it's coming right back up to the 12s. 12 12.2, 12 12.3. 12 so I can go a little bit more. Okay, so I just shut it off. Um, so as you can see, um, making my adjustments actually changed the air-fuel ratio. So that's what you want. You wanna be in that area where the needles have an effect on the air-fuel ratio. Uh, so as you can see, sometimes when you adjust the needles, you gotta wait a few, like uh, 30 seconds or something for it to actually start to make the change, you know, to see it on the air-fuel ratio gauge. Uh, it takes a little time, and sometimes you gotta snap the throttle to um, get it to, settle back into where it was but uh, that's just basically where you want to be um, as far as being able to adjust them if you're not getting adjustment then you got a problem somewhere else okay so that's about where I'm gonna leave it 12 and a half to 1 uh, sometimes it gets a little higher 12.6 7 8 uh, you know in that range between Patrick at Pro System says between 12 and a half and 13 and a half uh, depending on the cam okay that's the whole thing Guys, so we're in the car and uh, I'm just going to kind of try to hold the camera on the um, AFR gauge and make a few uh, like under load pulls and um, then we can look in. This is kind of how I tune it. Uh, that way I can go back and look at it and then see where it was at. But um, like I said, I've already done that uh, a couple times and uh, pretty much have it set where I want. So just kind of doing it to show you guys. So, uh, so let's go.
so I just turned the uh, car off so you all could hear me. But um, hopefully you could see that, see the AFR gauge uh, going down the road. I know it's kind of hard sometimes on the camera, but uh, it was staying, you know, under load. It was staying in the 12 and a half range, which is right about where we need it to be. Uh, it did, I noticed it went up at the 13 here and there, which is a little lean. Uh, so, you know, like I told you before, I went down three numbers on the on the secondary and two numbers on the primary. So I ended up at a 64 on the primary and a 75 on the secondary. So I could bump the primaries up maybe one number or the secondaries up one number to see if I can get that really good, you know, in the 12 and a half range. Um, honestly, it's not that big of a deal. That's, you know, the only thing is, um, I'm not sure if you notice on video or not, but there is still like a slight stumble. Like when I'm at around 2000 RPMs and you stab it, there's a slight stumble where it just hesitates just a touch. And that, that can be cleaned up by the, um, the squirters. I can get uh, a bigger squirter. Uh, we can play with the cam, get a little more aggressive on the cam, uh, the, the squirter cam, get a little more aggressive on that. Uh, so that that's really, I, I don't worry about that. That's not a big deal. Uh, we got the idle like 12 and a half to 13. Um, that's really good. So, you know, like, like I was saying before, it's, you know, as long as you go off those settings, I told you in the beginning, and then work from there. And if you get too far off of that, you know you have an issue somewhere else, okay? You know, try cracking those secondaries to get that idle to where you want it. Uh, but just keep in mind that if you have a cam, if you have a stock cam, you could probably get it to idle really good. But if you have a cam like this does, with a little bit of overlap, uh, you're gonna get, it's gonna be a little rich because fuel's getting, you know, put into the exhaust, raw fuel, because of the overlap. So. Don't worry too much about that. Uh, this, the way I have it set up right now, the, the plugs are gonna be really clean. It'll look really good. So anyway, I hope you guys learned something on this video. Uh, I, you know, in the beginning I said that I'm not an expert at this. I'm really not. I know enough just to maybe help out someone who's just starting out and you know throwing a carb on their car. So um, yeah, a few more things to work out, but overall I'm happy with it. And um, yeah, we'll keep going from there. But anyway, I hope you all learned something in this video. and. Um, Maybe the next video, I'm, I'm hoping to get the black car out at the track. It's been so long and um, we just, it rains every day. So there was an event this weekend, but it got canceled because of rain. So anyway, that's going to do it for this video, guys. Hope you enjoyed it and I will check you next time.